All right, everyone, the YouTube universe, and uh, all you people that are obsessed people that um, I've been talking about this for many, many years. Uh, I think, I want to say I came up with this idea, I think it was probably like 2015, maybe. I was in Highlands, North Carolina, and I was with a bunch of friends, uh, a bunch of my GT buddies, GT Porsche buddies. And I think it was maybe like my third trip. And I said, you know, we really need to buy a house and then just set it up real nicely and then and then have it available for us when we come up here. Uh, but then uh, I, th I think the original concept was for me, we need to make a hill community where we all have a bunch of houses. And then, of course, then it immediately transitioned into, well, we really need to... We really need to stop uh, or, or build a go-kart track. Yeah. And then we need to have like this and that. And then we need to be able to go garage condos. Like, no, no, no. I just want a house in the mountains with a great couch and a great uh, comfortable place to wash my car with an awesome garage and uh, and just have the ability to really live a, you know, a mountain lifestyle and go up there whenever I want. Uh, and so the idea was born, and I thought, you know, maybe I could build a community, and then we could, you know, sell a bunch of houses or lease them out or rent them out or something like that. And so then, you know, years later, I, uh, you know, Obsessed Garage really started to take off. So it, it sort of come up with this idea before Obsessed Garage, and then Obsessed Garage, you know, I'd, I'd do some different events where some of you would come out to different things, and it was always such a great experience. You know, we always had such a great, um, there's like instant camaraderie where we'd all, you know, you'd get a bunch of obsessed people together with a common interest, and, you know, magic happens. So I, uh, you know, I, uh, the, the, maybe a, a couple of years ago, you know, I'd spent more time in the mountains. You know, the last, actually, the last two years, I've had a real tough time with driving and my obsessive compulsive issues and my fear of passing out and stuff like that. So I've been really uh, working on improving that, and I feel like I'm, I'm I'm getting much better. The mountains have fixed me many times, uh, and so what my hope is uh, is that you know I get to the mountains and I can really start to start to get back to get my life back and you know, drive around. I have all these cars, but drive them around however I want. So the concept of the idea, uh, I came up with this idea of, you know, why don't I uh, set up uh, a home? So this was about uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, Michelle and I booked a trip up to the mountains. Why don't we start looking for some houses? And what we would do, we'd, we'd, we'd set it up OG spec. Uh, and then I would just rent it out to some of you. And um, we would, uh, you know, sort of promote it a little bit on the channel. And really, it was just to get me a mountain house, and then I could rent it out just so that it doesn't sit there unoccupied, because that's a bigger problem than anything. Um, you'd be better off having renters go in there and mess it up than to have it sit idle and not, not be very well maintained. So we went and looked at a bunch of houses, and the, the house I'm about to show you was the very first house I went up there for. And I don't, I don't remember quite how refined the concept of destination og was it's not nearly as refined as i now have it um, but the concept was that we would we would rent it out to people i uh, would outfit the garage and uh, we didn't have obsessed closets we didn't have drawer organization we didn't have lighting we didn't have um, a lot of the stuff the audio we didn't have any audio stuff a year ago and so I think it was like June 5th or 6th we actually went up there and we saw this place so if you're you know, if you're interested, let's just go to our screen here. So what you could do, if you want to watch these videos specifically, just go to, uh, let's see here. So if you go to the channel and just search Helen, and the very first video where we tour the house here, maybe we'll refer back to this in the video, but it starts at like eight minutes or so. Uh, and so this is the house, the very first house that we looked at, uh, where we went and walked around and you know looked at this house. And then again in this episode two, yeah, this this at episode two at the very end, we go back to the house again. So to bring you up to speed, if you haven't been following along, you're just watching this this for the first time. Uh, this is the house that I'm now under contract. 
purchase. It's this really amazing property. Uh, it's in Helen, Georgia. Um, I'll explain, you know, my methodology and thought process here. I can't wait till this thing gets all pressure washed. Uh, but it's this really cool alpine looking, you know, house in in the in Helen, Georgia, which is right in the North Georgia mountains. And uh, and so we're under contract for this house. Uh, it's supposed to be closing June 14th. I'm actually leaving tomorrow morning early. We're going up to the OG mountain trip in Fontana, and Mike and I are going to go back down to the house on, um, on Saturday. Uh, we take some measurements and things like that, and then we're going to go up in – you know, June 14th through whenever to kind of get this thing set up to then, you know, let people borrow it for money. So the, the, and, and I, and I explain a bunch about that stuff in these, in these videos, if you just search Helen. So it's the search for destination OG day two. And the other video was called uh, finding destination OG. Uh, and so these were, you know, these were, these were the, you know, the homes that I was really interested in. So, just to bring you completely up to speed, so actually this house here, the Highlands Falls home, we actually made an offer on this house, uh, which was in the Highlands. So if you look at this from a from a map perspective, when we first went last year, we looked at a house in Helen, we looked at a house in Blairsville, um, we looked at several other houses around this area, we looked at a house over here in Blue Ridge. Uh, we looked at a house in, um, I think in, uh, yeah, we looked at a house over here on uh, Lake Burton in Tiger, uh, and we looked at a house here, Hiawassee, which that we really liked. Uh, we loved the house in Lake Burton, but it was like $4 million, something crazy like that. So it was just, you know, th there was more of a see what you, what, what you could get. Uh, and then we went up to, to the Highlands and we looked at, you know, there are half a dozen houses here. So to give you some perspective of where this is in the world, so here's Atlanta, there's Chattanooga here, All right, Knoxville's up here, uh, Knoxville's closest to the tail of the dragon and all that, uh, and then you have Charlotte and uh, you know, Augusta's over here. So just to give you an idea where it's at in the world, um, we're talking about the, you know, the Smoky Mountains uh, in this Asheville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, Atlanta sort of corridor. So from Greenville over to Chattanooga and then up to Knoxville and Asheville, this is this is the, the sweet spot. So this is where all the all my one of, it's my, I don't have a lot of experience with the rest of the world, but this is my favorite part of the world and it's within reasonable proximity of where I live, which is here in you know north of Atlanta, Orlando here. We live here in the villages. So if you go, if you were to go from the villages to the mountains, it's you know eight or nine hours to get there, Se seven seven hours and fifteen minutes to get to to get to Helen. So Helen is here. Um, we had uh, we had actually made an offer on a house here in Highlands, North Carolina. Um, that house was quite a bit more money. Um, we we uh, um, I made an offer which was you know eight hundred thousand dollars less than they wanted. Uh, but it was based on some comparables. <clears throat> we they didn't even counter those that uh, the 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 we I asked if we could do a an appraisal. So I paid a couple thousand bucks to have an appraisal done. Uh, the appraisal came back within thirty thousand bucks or forty thousand bucks of what I had offered. I came up another hundred grand and then I was out. So I was a hundred and forty thousand bucks over you know, the appraised value. And they were, you know, so we were two or three hundred thousand dollars apart, and I was out. And so, the beauty of the Highlands—I uh, always say the Highlands, but it's called Highlands. The great part about this: this is super like my. This is my wannabe style. You know, this is where I where I where I aspire to get to. But this is a an, an area of affluence that's way above my pay grade. Um, but the great part about this is just, you know, from a town perspective of, you know, places to eat and things to do from the stuff that I like to do, which is basically eat and drive. Um, Highlands has you know, great proximity to hiking and mountain biking. Um, some of these roads over here on this side of the mountains are amazing. They're a little harder to get to. Like 281 is one of my favorite roads on the planet. Uh, you can go up here to Blue Ridge. The Blue Ridge Parkway is up here. Um, you know, all these roads over here on this side of the mountains are just insane. 
Uh, they're insane over here on this side of the mountains too, but this is, this is just a great area to be the Brevard, all that stuff. So Brevard is here. <clears throat> so when, when we, when that fell through, we took a year off from the, from the idea. I thought what I would do is I thought I would build the house here and, and, you know, at, at, down the street. So we you know, kind of got ourselves aligned and all set up for that. Uh, and so the plan was going to be to build an ICF, you know, a mansion here in Lady Lake. And then, of course, you know, we had such a horrible experience living in our last house in Harbor Hills. And so we got the heck out of there. I bought this house, which I'm in right now, and um, I like it. I think it's um, I think it's good. I mean, it's going to hold me over for the time being, and we'll be able to you know live life here. The thing that really has me nervous is the you know the potential for you know uh, you know a real difficult economic time. Um, if I have a house that's performing, you know, that's, that's, that people are renting from me, even in a tough economic time, I think if I build a really nice, unique property like this Helen house, so if we take this and make it great, uh, shoot, just the way it currently sits, I think a lot of people, especially the pricing I'm going to be uh, letting people borrow this for, uh, is going to be, you know, that this house will cover its cost, at least, at least that's the hope. Plus, it gives me a muse, gives me something to, to do projects. And then I don't get stuck. My biggest fear is getting stuck on building a custom home. I think I'm destined to build homes, uh, not me build them, but you know, to to pay someone to build the home and put all the cool stuff in it. I, I think I'm destined for that. Um, but I just uh, it's just a really horrible time to do that because you'll. I just know that we'll begin, end up holding the bag trying to get things done and they just won't get done because they can't get the stuff. So I need something that exists, that is acceptable, that then I can get stuff when I can get stuff and I can put it together. So we, um, to bring you fully up to speed, we went to the mountains this time uh, a week and a half ago and, uh, and we went to, we didn't go to Helen. So you know, actually back up a little bit. When when we went to Highlands, it makes Helen feel super roachy. I loved this house. I love this house in the Highland in, in, in Helen. I love the idea of it. Um, I think this is the perfect obsessed garage, you know, first property. But we had our heart set on Highlands, and and after a year and a lot of clarity, it, it, it's just clear to me that you know being in the North Georgia mountains is much closer to where we are. Uh, and at least, at least a couple hours closer to where we are. And it, uh, it puts us, um, it's just more accessible. You can get a lot more for your money over here than you do in the Highlands and in being in Highlands, you know, all the homes there were going to be a massive undertaking of not just bolting stuff on like this house that I, that I'm under contract for the house that I'm buying. I'm just, I'm just going in and modifying it. We're not going in and tearing it apart. I'd have to tear apart most of the homes that cost a million dollars more than the Helen house and, and just much, much bigger risk to try to, you know, let me let enough people borrow it for money to, to get it, to get it set up. So anyway, this time around, we went back up there. I'd made the decision. We're going to hold off on building our house here and we'll build it some other time. Uh, and I made a decision. We're going to go up here to the mountains again. There were a bunch of homes that really looked really, that really, really looked promising. There was a couple of three in Blairsville. There's one over here in Hiawassee. There was another one here in Tiger. Um, there was one in Clarksville, one in Cleveland, uh, or actually two, three in Cleveland. Uh, and then I didn't even plan on going to see the Helen house, but long story short, we went to all these homes. Most of them were junk. The very last home we looked at was our number one house at a really gnarly driveway, but we thought we could make it work. I made an offer on the house. The people then sort of pulled out of the deal. We've later found out it's under contract. So there was another buyer that was interested uh, and so they probably used us in order to get that other buyer in a contract. That house fell through. Uh, and so I went back to Helen and then it just made it very, very clear that this house is my destiny. Uh, so it wasn't like, well, now I'm going to buy. It's kind of like, you know, I, I proposed to three women and then the, the, the fourth one was, was, you know, I'm not, I'm not pretending like the fourth girl was really the one all the time. 
that's not really the case here. This was always the house. I was just concerned with, with the roachiness of Helen. And I will tell you what did it is we went and we had sushi in Helen at, well, after we looked at this house, and it ch- totally changed perspective. But last week, you know, two weekends ago, we came home, and we made an offer on the house in Cleveland. And uh, it's a good thing it fell through because renting that was not going to be very practical. So now that you're up to speed, let's dig into this house. And I want to talk to you about what my plan is here. This may shift. This may change. But we'll sit here for an hour or two together, and I'm just going to kind of fumble through this and talk to you about what, what I'm planning. So first, let's, let's just look through the house. These are all the, the high-res images. Um, the house is... Uh, it's a little hard to tell how big. According to the plans, it's 4,100 square feet. So if we were to just add up these sections here, so if we zoom in, and let's go to the hand versus, what the heck, this is going to be really annoying. If we zoom in and we look at these square footages, So we're 985, 1025, and 2065. It feels a lot bigger than that, but so that's what 4,100 square feet, you know, according to, you know, according to the the, the plans. And I would think the plans are pretty accurate. So um, let's just say it's 4,000 square feet. That feels a whole lot bigger. So the house is um, right here in Helen, Georgia. It's actually in a community called Innsbruck. So it's somewhere, I think it's like in one of these little little jut outs or something. So it's it's in Innsbruck, um, which is right, you know, walking distance to downtown, you know, downtown right here in in, in Helen. Helen, if you're not familiar, with those of you watching on you know, the the you know, the other side of the country or in Canada or elsewhere, um, Helen is a town that is a like German replica. Uh, and so it has like, all kinds of like, you know, weird names of, you know, and like all this stuff is kind of real hokey and his granny's funnel cake. It's a very, um, there's a Georgia mountain coaster, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, but this is a, um, it's a very hokey old town that, um, I think is really ripe for, you know, some modernization, uh, but lots of cool events happen here. There's lots to do around here. Uh, and the other great thing about this community is that if you don't want to deal with any of that, so for some of my more posh people that are going to you know, borrow this house, you jump out here, you come out the backside of the entrance. So you come out 356 here, and you can you can head on out without ever having to go and mess with uh, mess with the, the Helen. So you could you could bypass out the back of the resort and you know go this way. But there's a hotel here as well, like right in the community. It's actually a pretty nice hotel. You know, if I'm saying that, you know, it's not bad. Uh, and um, and then right here is one of the greatest roads in the world, Richard B. Russell Scenic Highway. Takes you right up to um, to Hogpen Gap. Uh, it's uh, it's like you know three minutes right out the back door. And then you can go over here to this is Blood Mountain. Um, this here is Wolfpen Gap. Uh, so all these roads in this section here are just amazing. Uh, and then they give you some proximity to the Dragon. So the Tail of the Dragon is about two hours north. So it's right up here. The Tail of the Dragon is right here. So Cherahala Skyway, Fontana Dam. This is this is Hellbender and Moonshiner 28. Um, so all these roads here are amazing. Uh, and so you're only, you know, you're two hours from here. So you go out in the morning early, you go up and back, and you're back early afternoon. Uh, and then there's another road over this way. Um, you're, you're only, you know, you're only, you know, an hour and a half to the, to the, to the highlands. So, but these are like hour and a half because it's only 20, 30, 40 miles to these places, 50 miles, but you know, you're technically going slow on mountain roads. This here is a uh, wire road. Oh no, that's 28. Waya is somewhere around here. That's Otter Creek. Where is Waya? I always forget where it is. Is this it? That's Weaver Branch. Anyway, there's another great road over here. There's 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 hundreds and hundreds of great roads. So this puts me in a good spot. Um, I think most of the time we'll actually uh, we'll fly into Greenville. 
Spartanburg, Spartanburg, Greenville, Spartanburg area. Uh, the BMW plant is here in Spartanburg. Uh, so it's about, uh, it's about two hours to Helen. Um, not quite an hour and 45 minutes from Greenville, uh, to Helen over here, or, you know, it's about, you know, it's about a little less than two hours, hour and 50 minutes from Atlanta. So you can come in either way. I think we'd go to Greenville just cause it's a nicer drive. So, um, so that's, that's where the house is. That sort of brings you up to speed and, you know, what I've been thinking. And, um, and, and again, Helen is not really OG style from a town, but after having spent a lot of time up there in various areas and looking at different houses and considering things, this seems to be the way to go. So here's the exterior of the house. Looks like so. You can't see this. That's the hotel across the mountain there. You can't see it from the house. I didn't even know it was there until I just saw this photo. It's kind of neat how this house I'll have first right to purchase, uh, which I'd like to purchase at some point in the not too distant future. This is a full gut, you know, rebuild or renovation. Um, and it's a really cool, like five or six story little house on how they have it set up. But I think this could be something cool that I could buy in the future where we could renovate and put it all together and have this whole little compound uh, in the community. This whole area, once this gets pressure washed, you know, probably, you know, springtime, we'll probably have this all uh, restained. Uh, the house is really, really great. So it was originally built in 2005 and then it was completely remodeled in 2015. I think they started the remodel. They started the designing in 2010. You'll see the plans are dated 2010. Uh, and then they, you know, finished the project in 2015. And there's been a single lady living here ever since. So you can see the driveway. So the driveway comes down here. Um, and, and so these share like a basin area once you get to the bottom of the driveway. This little section right here, you know, is going to be a little bit gnarly that I'm going to have to, uh, we're going to, you know, Mike and I are going to have our cars up there, um, you know, in the next couple of days. So right here, there's a, there's a crest. Uh, or like a um, a curve or, or a crown, I guess you could say. And so your car may, may bottom out there. We could always just leave it up here, but you want to get it down to the garage. And so we may just kind of cut that off and just repave it where it's a little bit uh, we take the we take the flat to drop off transition out and just make it a straight line. So I'll talk to the neighbors about that and see if I can do that. But we'll find out here this weekend if that even needs to be done. Um, let me see. There's a, there's a better photo of the driveway. See how it comes down. So that's this section right here is the potentially dicey area where um, where we might have to do a little bit of modification. Uh, but so basically what I would do is just cut it here, cut it there. We take some dirt out and make it, you know, transition a little bit straighter rather than curved. But I'm guessing, you know, the GT4 we took there, the M4 we took there, they weren't lowered, um, but didn't seem to be a problem. This, this looks all flat, but this, this is pretty, you know, this is coming at a reasonable grade and then you can see the stairs going down. So then this drops off pr pretty drastically. Um, so something we're going to have to. We're going to have to consider modifying, but you can see, just imagine like a, you know, a GT3 sitting right here and, you know, and turn it at an angle and, you know, the thing sitting in here where this is all nice and clean and pressure washed and we have, you know, a car sitting there just looking awesome in a photo. So there's actual, here's the Innsbruck golf course. Again, you can't see any of this from the house, but there's, I don't know what hole is a 16th hole or something that runs down here in this little valley, but this drops off the side of the mountain. I think it's on about five acres. It's on several lots. Uh, and you know, the guy spent twice as, so here's the course down here. So the guy spent twice as much money building this place as what I bought it for. As you can see, it's pretty sophisticated, pretty elaborate. It's really a unique house there's a aerial view of the golf course here's the house here you know the golf course kind of runs through the community you can see it's in the mountains really really cool uh, the neighborhood has lots of undulation the, the roads are pretty nicely paved and so it's easy to get in and out of for any kind of car no matter what the the level is so this is the back side of the house so you, there, so you can see the steepness of the driveway coming down here. Pretty, it's pretty steep, uh, but very doable. 
Uh, this is looking off the back. There's little walkways and retaining walls all around it, which we had inspected. There's one little section of the retaining wall that we're going to have to check out. Uh, so here's the driveway coming down. So you drive in, and so this is the, you know, this is my house on the right. The other house is right there. Or, I'm sorry, on the left. The other house there is on the right. So this is still downhill, but not super duper steep. Oops. And then it drops off right there, and that, so that's the section that I'll have to have to kind of address. You can see it coming down the hill down here, and you can see all this concrete is freaking awesome. They've got drains, and everything is very, very well done. It just needs to be dialed in. And so it's actually being pressure washed next week. Hard, you know, like they're going to spend two days pressure washing all of this, the whole exterior. I'm probably going to have to restain the decks and restain the exterior, but that's something that we can do in in phase two, which will be in in the winter time. And this is a dream, just amazing. This whole washing car corridor. This is probably you could fit 15 cars in here. 10 cars in here in this little this little area you know tons and tons of space this you know i'm intending to make a uh we're going to do a boom pole and we'll do we'll like powder coat it black so it doesn't look so in your face but this you know there are already drains available so this will be a dedicated you know outdoor washing area we'll also have a dedicated indoor washing area uh, and so this is where you'd be washing your cars undercover there's lots of shade here as well. You can see sun doesn't only peek through. So you come here, comfortably wash your car, looking out over into the mountains. It's we'll get rid of all this wood here and all that, and just we'll, I don't know, we'll do something with this and uh, just make this awesome. So this is a 16 foot two car uh, door, and then there's the other the other um, the other 18 foot two car door. Then this is the double deep section. So it's, I guess, a seven-car garage is seven, seven to eight cars, depending on how big the cars are. The pool is down below. So this, so right here, what you're looking at, this is, a, so right above this is that second two-car, the, the single deep two-car, just to give you a frame of reference. But this is obviously outdoors, but you can see the home is built like a, it's built like a like an office building with, you know, with uh, I beams and steel girders, and it's a really pretty incredible. You know, it's a masterpiece. Also, you know, when I was doing this in the beginning, and my vision for for Destination OG wasn't quite as um, refined. I was really nervous about the ability to maintain this, but I, I think we can. I think we can make it work. I also, Mike wasn't working for us then, so we didn't have you know Mike and I. It would have been just me trying to figure out how to do this with a property manager. So now we have the ability. We can just hop on a plane, ship our cars up there, go do our thing. So you can see how freaking cool this is. Imagine, you know, you're gonna go there for a week, five days, two weeks. When I'm not there, I get to use all my stuff and live the dream. It's going to be amazing. So more pictures. Um, so this is the this. So this style is the, you know I don't like this style at all. I know many of you do, uh, and this was the big epiphany. I, I thought I was going to have to take this. Hold on one second. It's hot in this room. I gotta fix the air conditioning. But this style is like our two houses ago, our Woodgate house, where as there's the tongue and groove pine, you know, knotty tongue and groove pine. This off to the left is a pre-built elevator shaft. There's no elevator there, uh, but it is an elevator shaft that we could. We might as well put an elevator in. It's there. You can't really do anything else with it. Uh, but when you walk in the front door, um, you know, phase. Two and three and four will be to modify, uh, but in the beginning, and we're going to kind of work through this here together. Part of the reason I want to make this video is I wanted to kind of put my thoughts together. I've met with the the, the garage design guys. I've met with the um, my interior designer to start to get get ready to go. Uh, I'll explain all that as we as we kind of work our way through. So if we go back to the plans, and let's go to page two, page three. So let's zoom in one spot here. 
So what you're looking at in this photo, so this photo here, if you so figure you're looking into the kitchen, that is right, what the heck is it? Right here, sorry. So you're walking, you walk into this area. So it doesn't have a grand front entrance at all. Now there's another entrance over here on the main level on the on this on the patio on the on the deck where you could walk in on the side. So there's not one like big grand entrance. There's actually this is one of the turnoffs I had of the house. But you know I, I, you know you you get a big grand front door, but then you never use it. You always use the side door coming in the garage. So that clearly was part of their their methodology and the design. Uh, and so phase two would be to paint. Uh, and so we're going to, or I know some of you get really mad at this, but I'm going to tear apart a lot of this pine by, or leave the pine, but I'm going to paint over it like we did at Woodgate. And so then the kitchen here, the cabinets are actually amazing. These are super high end, custom built, like really true, custom, high quality cabinets. Um, all of this, this is my favorite stuff. Like these, like, you know, metal features where, you know, this is like functional functionally excellent if you will um now this is too yellow for me too yellow and red uh and so the big the real difficulty i was having with buying this house is really expensive i i think i'm getting a great value for the house um this is one of the probably the most expensive homes in this helen area uh and so that was a big concern of mine it's been for sale for a really long time um it you know that th was my concern last year we were looking at this uh, if i wasn't so confident that we can make this really amazing uh, the fact that it already is amazing is is um like i would go and love to stay in this right now even though it's not my style we um I'm I'm really confident that there's others that are like me and you that would want to go and stay at a place like this and and as long as it was reasonable, you know this this place if they were to just rent it out would be you know a couple thousand bucks a night, you know because it's a giant house, you know at least at least twelve thirteen hundred dollars a night. I want to do it for a lot less than that because the way that I'm going to make this work is we're going to put all our products in it and then when people are buying products online from watching the videos like this video you're watching uh, you guys help support this by buying stuff and then also the people that go there will want to go there so they can experience and then order for, for your own house so the big crushing thing for me that i was having a real difficult time is i wanted to paint all of this i want to rip out the backsplash i want to change all the fixtures change all the lights redo the home you know, the, all the speakers and home theater stuff redo all the lights paint all the walls here uh and and then get rid of this fireplace and you know, maybe change the stone and 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 then you know redo the pool deck you know so i was doing a thousand things at once rebuild the garage and I came to the epiphany, if we just go in and furnish this, so I don't want any of their furniture, but if we, f if we get furniture, so we get beds and furniture, couches and, and kitchen table and stuff like that, I get all the linens, I get all the towels, we get, you know, things like, you know, dishes and, and silverware, um, we get, uh, you know, basic, you know, couple of TV set up. Many people would want to go to it just as is and then go back to see all the changes we make. Uh, and so I'm going to take this in stages. And it was a big epiphany that, you know, my coach, coach, you know, Rick was talking about. He was talking about how, you know, the longer this takes, the better. You know, the people want to, they don't want to get this rammed down their throat. Uh, and I was really stressed out about how much this was going to cost and how big of a risk this was going to be. And so rather than me getting scaffolding, hiring painters and spending $50,000 to have this whole thing repainted, I think we're going to do it and rip out the master bathroom and change every tile and all that stuff. And rather than doing that, it's already great. Let's just take our time and we'll, we'll bring you along for the ride. And then, you know, I only really need 20 of you to, you know, to borrow this thing, you know, a year to cover it. So I think, um, I think I'm going to take it much slower. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, though, is build the garage for sure. So you can see, you know, this will be a nice little comfortable, um, you know, that's one of my key requisites. Have a comfortable couch. We'll have a bigger couch here. 
uh, probably a similar size table. Uh, we're going to utilize this area a little better. Um, there's another entry here that you probably won't use very often, uh, but you can kind of take a look and see, you know, if you look in this area, uh, if you look back at the plans, you can see how this is laid out. So you walk through the front door, family room area is here, kitchen is here, uh, then there's a hallway that looks down this way. Uh, and so you have the upstairs going up, stairs going down, bathroom on the right, laundry room on the left, your pantry's over here in, in this section over there, just to kind of give you a frame of reference for what we're looking at. So there's the hallway, here's the pantry, you have your Sub-Zero Wolf as well. Um, you have, we'll do Newport Brass here eventually. Um, but imagine, you know, just get some, you know, this, their furniture isn't bad, but we'll do, we're doing our own furniture. We get our furniture in here. We get this all dialed in. It looks fantastic, you know, for phase one, if you will. So here's looking at it uh, from a little different angle. Um, I love how the doors, you know, there's no big grand entrance, but there's lots of doors that you can use. And I, I like how they're not like sliding glass doors. These are regular doors that you can go, the regular French doors you can go and use. And I, I think what we would do is I'll probably do an outdoor kitchen out there. So on this patio out here is where I think we would build our um, Heston nature cast set up on this deck. Now there's a basic outdoor kitchen and that basic outdoor kitchen is um, uh, is down by the pool, uh, but but I want to do a full that outdoor kitchen. I like having the outdoor kitchen off the main kitchen, uh, and then I can do a lot of grilling. And you can come in here and eat at the table. We'll have probably a large table out here, some seating out here. This will all be pressure washed and restained and all set up. You can kind of look out in the kitchen. Something, and I'll probably build it out there rather than on the pool deck, but. Who knows? That may change. And that's one of the main reasons why I want to get in this place. So if I get in here and we live it, then I'll have a better, instead of trying to figure it out now, now when I'm in here for months, then I can get a better idea for how I want to, how I want to do this. You know, when, when we rip out tile, we'll know how we really want it to, to look. And so because it's so nice already, uh, I think phase one is still very, will be very desirable for people to go and check it out. So we'll do some Dyn Audio stuff here. We'll do a, you know, LG OLED here, have it ISF calibrated. I'm not sure what I would do about this thing long term. I'm inclined to say we'd pull this out. It's just not my style. We would change the tile here. You know, this would all be painted. This is a coat closet. Uh, and then we have some really cool piece of furniture here of some sort, some big chunky wooden something or other. Um, but we are going to make this. This will still feel very mountain house-like, uh, but maybe a little bit more modern mountain house than, you know, this. This was designed in 2010. Uh, and so probably most of the thoughts were this would have been great 2005, you know, style. Uh, and so I want to bring it up to make it timeless. So down here, there's the stairs downstairs. We'll, you know, pull all these doors off and Mike and I will spray them and paint them in phase two. Um, but for now, you know, the, the walls are great. This place is pretty much indestructible. That's another really cool thing about this. So you walk down the hallway, See if we get some better better views here, just kind of finishing up the kitchen. I don't hate the countertops. I think the countertops are fine. Change the backsplash, paint the windows, paint the trim, uh, paint the ceiling. We do some different uh, lighting that Laurel's going to dial in for us just to make it our style. Not that this is terrible, um, but to make it our style and make it make it awesome. Change these out for some either some, you know, we'll figure out what they are, but either um, Sonance or, or Dyn Audio. Uh, over time and you know get this place really set up with blue os and make it so you can really experience all the stuff that i love newport brass but see notice this has the same wolf cooktop a wolf uh hood as the same stuff i had in in the woodgate house really cool this these these are awesome like the quality of this stuff maybe we'd adjust the hardware a little bit maybe we wouldn't but um i think it looks great so then you come down here, and the pantry is pretty neat. Same high-quality wood. 
And so this is the bedroom down here on the right. So this is this bedroom down here at the end of the hallway. So what I'm intending to do, we were talking to Laurel about this, is we're going to have king beds in all of these rooms. Now, a king headboard is going to be a little big. Uh, Laurel has some way where we make some sort of custom setup here. Um, I want this to be, we're going to build a bunk room with a bunch of twins uh, for the kids. Uh, generally, I know when we go somewhere, we want our kids to be as far away from us as possible. Uh, and so all the rooms, because a lot of times this will be you guys renting it with three or four buddies. Um, we all want king, I want king beds and nothing worse than going on vacation and try to stay in a, in a twin you know, so we're gonna have king king beds with um, beauty rest mattresses and nice, you know, Columbia pillows and nice stuff. So this would be a room we'd probably you know paint and clean up and do a, a big ass ceiling fan and things like that. Um, put you know probably put TVs eventually in every room so that you know people have that option or not. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But this is that bathroom, which is fine. Um, Again, not not the right style, but uh, it's really nice stuff. So this is one of those things that maybe we could do some paint or change or not. Um, we'll have to live with it to see what it's like. This is pretty incredible. So this will be a little sitting area upstairs, you know, looking out toward the, the you know toward the mountains and the, the trees, and just kind of feeling like you're in in nature. Um, again, I don't know what we would do with if we're going to paint this or not. I, I, maybe we won't. I don't know. Uh, you know, we're going to change this all the DMF lighting in phase two. Um, I think we would probably leave these. I like these this this hardware here. I think it's I think it's pretty nice. Uh, so I, I think with the right furniture, we can make this look really really cool and feel really comfortable. And that's the key is I want it to feel comfortable for me. I don't give a crap about you. For me, I want it to be comfortable and feel like I'm home. And, you know, just changing paint colors and things like that. So if you're looking upstairs, this is kind of looking down from the balcony. Pretty cool. Um, this gets into the master area. So let's kind of show you that on the, on the map, if you will. So we were just looking at, so this was op open to below. This is that sitting area over here. There was a hallway down here to the bed. Now, there aren't two bedrooms. There's actually one big bedroom, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but there is, yeah, this is a little platform you know, on the back side of the stairs. So we do something cool there. And so when you walk down this hallway, that's how you get to the master area. So that's these pictures are a little out of order, but I probably should have organized them. Um, but this is the closet. The closet's pretty insane. Um, I don't know what we'll do here. We may adjust this a bit. But so this is what you're looking at. So there's this room where we have the, all the built-in stuff. We have, um, so this is a little bit different, but this is all closet, the whole thing. They spent probably fifty, sixty thousand dollars on all of this. There's some more attic storage. So this is where we're going to showcase what we can do with a closet in phase two, phase two and three. Uh, so when we're doing the outdoor kitchen, we'll be doing the closets as well. Um, it's going to be a shame to pull out this closet. Look how freaking cool this is. But this is all closet made stuff. But we'll transition this all out to our our stuff as well. The floor is nice. Um, this is, the, I think, a little bit different floor. This, I think, was the original side of the house that they sort of modified or added on to. Um, but uh, the, you know, the closet's pretty insane. And then this is the second laundry room. So we're kind of jumping around here. I should have organized the pictures for you. So there's a laundry room. Where is it? Right here at the end of this hallway over on the master wing. The cool thing is if you're staying here, and you're if you're the guy that's footing the bill for it and you've got friends that are coming with you or your family's with you, you this feels like you're in a completely different compound, which is really cool. I'll talk about what I'm going to do with this room here in a minute. Um, but let's just kind of thumb through these uh, these pictures here. So laundry room, 
I don't know how much modification we would do here over time, but we'd probably do something. Um, this is the master bedroom. So master, we'd, you know, I just think paint, different furniture, you know, but this room could be cool. Some, you know, proper sit sitting area, um, you know, change the paint color and things like that. This master will be really cool. This is pretty much the antithesis of my style. This is very old world or Tuscan feeling. And so in phase three, you know, Mike and I would go up there and we'd spend a, two weeks, three weeks, and we would just tear this whole thing apart. Maybe we'd repaint these cabinets, change the countertops, just change the style completely. I know some of you are thinking I'm nuts, but it's it's really really nice really really expensive um there's there's uh dual water closets see look at this thing it's nuts um so you look at the so here's the bathroom here right and so you have water closet water closet um this is actually designed a little bit differently because the shower did they decided to change it the shower is much bigger than what it shows here uh, but there's a full sauna as well there's dual water closets and a sauna. It's nuts. And a giant tub. I'd probably rip this out and redo this. But again, you, you guys think I'm nuts. It's it's just not my style. But there's so much potential. There's the sauna. There's the shower. Pretty cool. So this, again, we're jumping around here. So this is the secondary master. Um, so this was, again, this is the, this is the guy. So, uh, so this is the guy's foot in most of the bill. And then this is uh, the area over here where the, where the, the, the second family stays. Um, and so this isn't two rooms. They decided to make this one. And so that bathroom we're looking at is here. And then this is another sort of secondary master. Uh, and so if we look at that in the photo, so here's that bathroom, a lot going on here. It, it, again, really, really nice. I don't know if we'll modify it, if we'll leave it. We'll have to live with it and see what we'll end up doing in phase three. And then this is the secondary master. Again, we're going to get some really great furniture and just make this feel comfortable. There's not a single rug in this whole house or uh, carpet in this whole house. We'll be doing area rugs all over the place to soften it up. You're going to see it's going to be amazing. I'm going to have amazing audio everywhere, and it's going to be fantastic. So this room, uh, Laurel got me thinking about what I could do here that's amazing. So that's this one here. So this room, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to make this like a statement piece. And I'm a, I, I don't know. Should I tell you? I think what I'm going to do is do like a full panoramic um, um, racing sim in here with a bunch of really comfortable seating as kind of a hangout for like, you know, for us, for car types. And then do like one of those ridiculous, you know, panoramic racing sims like uh, what uh, what John got in the Atlanta Garage or our friend uh, Jim up in um, uh, up at Lake Norman uh, got at his house. He has the, the Ferrari Garage or the Moduline stuff that, you know, we you know, set up with a, a lot of things. Um, he shared a lot in the Facebook group. Um, so we'll do some crazy racing sim up here and just make this like a statement room. Just something really cool. That would be more of like phase four, you know, where I'd get this, where I'd have amazing carpet, just super comfortable. You walk in there, we'd soundproof it. You could go in there and just, just rip some, some racetracks or something. I don't know. So I, I got some ideas for what we might do there that I think could be really cool. So then um, as we kind of work through, then it goes down to the basement. Now this is cool. So uh, Laurel's going to really work her magic here on this. Um, this is not so that the family room upstairs is not a great home theater type place. This is not a great home theater type space, um, but we're going to design this, uh, especially initially. This would be like the, 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 the entertain hangout area. So this is where you could have, you know, the kids doing one thing, the parents doing one thing. 
So, but this is going to be a, a heavy, like stand up area, you know, where we'll have a couch, we'll have a TV, we'll have multiple TVs in here. This is where I'd envision, you know, college football playoffs going on or, you know, World Series or um, just, it's just going to be an awesome hangout spot. So, I'm not sure what we're going to do there yet, um, but this phase one would be to get some furniture in here. I think we're going to do a pool table and um, have uh, I'll upgrade and do some amazing audio but this won't be like sit down and watch a movie this would be like stand up and hang out and congregate and do stuff uh, we'll probably leave the wet bar here just modify it a bit we'll get us a um a zip hydro tap and i, I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out over here behind this pillar is another uh i think there's a dishwasher and stuff there so there's a lot of cool potential here that we de-yellow it I probably change the floors, or at least refinish the floors, and well, this is just like you know, just stained concrete is what it is. But you know, change the colors, change the lighting, temp color temp, and this is going to be cool. So that on the plans is here. So that is. Yeah, these plans are not correct. So they brought this into the house. So yeah, this is, I mean, that's another 5, 10, 15, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 25 by 14. So that's another 500 square feet right there that's in the house. Yeah, so now we're, that's why I thought, I thought that these plans weren't correct. And I don't think they have this in the square footage either. So I think that this is, this is off. So there's another deck out here. So I don't know, maybe it makes more sense to do the outdoor kitchen here. Maybe do the outdoor kitchen here. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do yet with an outdoor kitchen. They have the outdoor kitchen here combined with over here and, so we're going to, we're going to, the plans here aren't accurate. They, they must have made some decisions on the fly. Um, but you can see there's some real potential in the basement here. You walk down the hallway. Um, there's a bathroom here on the right. There's a bedroom here. Wait a second. That's the bathroom. There's the bedroom. Oh, no. Yeah, that's not a bathroom. This is a closet. That's the bathroom. That's the bedroom. This is a whole storage area that we're going to convert to a bunk room. So that's bedroom three. That's the bathroom. Again, not really our style. There's a little picture of the wet bar. Here's a picture of the other section of the wet bar. Um... And then they don't show a picture of this room here on the end. Um, but what we're going to likely do is build a two-tiered bunk room with four full or twin beds, depending on what we can fit. Um, so this room down here, there's a, the room actually carries this whole thing. So the room is really like this is how it's set up. And then what I would do... What I would do is this is where the server room, so we would just put a wall and door up there. We would change this door to a window, uh, and then we would make this a bunk room. I think that's going to be cool. So that would add another bedroom. They would all utilize these three rooms, would use the bathroom. And so let's say the, the teenage kid stays here, the little kids stay there, and you get the kids down here in the corner of the basement away from everybody else. All the adults stay upstairs. We convert it from a four-bedroom to really a six-ish six -ish bedroom um, and kind of set it up so that way you, know, you can have more people here if you wanted to. And so we already saw the pool deck area. What am I doing? Go back to the pictures. And this room. So this room is going to become the office theater. Meaning I'm going to have a, my desk set up in here somewhere. I have to lay out the room. 
Um, it might the desk might be over here. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to set up, or probably the desk will be over here. So this is the elevator shaft, I believe. Oh no, this was a closet for that would look into the pool storage. The elevator shaft is over here. I don't think we can see it. It has a full, this is a full safe room. So this, you walk into this safe and then this entire room back here is a big giant safe room where I can store all my gold bars and monies and trinkets, my Swarovski crystal and all of that. Uh, this is the bathroom here, which is terrible, but you know, it's well done. It's just not great. This is like amazing 2002 style. Here is, so there's just some ancillary pictures. So this is the laundry room upstairs. Rip the tile out, change the fixture, change the lights, paint the walls, change the backsplash in, in different phases. And this is a better better picture of the pantry. So you get the gist of what I'm planning. Now let's look at the garage, which is the most important part. I probably should have started with that. So think this room becomes office theater, have a TV, you know, giant, you know, OLED display, a crazy awesome sectional couch in here, maybe like a U-shaped couch where you could fit, you know, 10, 12 people in here to watch a movie, Dine Audio floor standing, crazy subwoofers, uh, you know, Dolby Atmos, you know, nine channel with, you know, four Atmos overhead and just make this room rip and then have a desk in here. I just like to have the idea of a desk and a, an office inside of my home theater, but I don't want a dedicated, you know, movie theater. I just like it better with a comfy couch and a great TV because most of the time I think, you know, people will be coming here, you and your family and your, your family's out to tubing, you're out driving or you and a buddy or something like that. I just think, I just think this place is going to be insane. It's going to be so good. It's already great. I'm going to make it even better. So I need to start planning it out when, when I, you know, over the next few weeks about what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. So Laurel's going to work on the furniture. I'm going to be working on all the AV equipment and how we're going to get this to phase one. And then end of the summer, people will be able to start, you know, borrowing it. So um, the garage. So let's go here. And let me see if I can just pull this. Let's zoom in. And let's switch to the hand. Zoom out a bit. So there's not actually two doors. There's a single door. And so when you go into the garage, actually, let's go to the YouTube video. Let's go here and I'll kind of show you. So the garage has a side entrance over here to the right. Right here on the, on the left there where we walk into the garage. And so you can see this section here is double deep. It's about 39 feet deep. I don't know what's in here. I'm hoping it's not some sort of water treatment or something. I, I don't know that I, I'm sure I opened this, but I just can't remember. So I really need this to come out. We're also going to block and either remove or frame the windows because there's not enough room to do. I want to do a giant cabinet array in here. Now, the ceilings aren't particularly tall. The other thing we can't do is we can't do a recessed lift because below this is the pool. Uh, so we won't be able to cut the concrete and recess the lift. So we're going to do a surface mount lift. So there's there's drains on both both sides. I'm pretty sure um, this, again, is our dedicated wash bay area. So we look back at the plans. So I think what we're going to do, and I'm going to get some exact dimensions of this. We're going to have all Cree linear fixtures in here, so it'll be extremely well lit. We're going to do like a like a 40 foot list of cabinet array across the back. We're going to take these windows out. These windows are going to stay, which look down over the mountain. We're going to do this. Will be our first garage. We do Lista. So imagine, imagine this. So you come here, you borrow it. 
the target is going to be somewhere in the five to six thousand dollar a week range, which would be seven hundred and fifteen to eight hundred and fifty dollars a night, which is pretty insane considering you can rent a room at the you know, Four Seasons for you know for fifteen hundred bucks a night. Um, so you're going to get this giant house for you know say eight hundred bucks a night. I rented this little baby house in the mountains for eighty eight hundred a night. It was not even. Is not even close. Forget about all the cool stuff we're going to put in here. So imagine you come in, you drive in here. The purple M3 will be probably sitting over here on the lift, which you could rent. So I'm getting a a um, Techno Violet with carbon ceramic G80 M3. I'll modify the heck out of it. It's going to be great, and that's something you could you could borrow that for money. It'll be probably something like a thousand bucks for the week to rent the car, right? So imagine that'll be sitting there. And then you, let's say you drove there in your GT3 or you drove there in your, you know, Audi RS7 or whatever, and you parked it right here. So in here, there'll be a pressure washer on the wall here, all the detailing stuff with all the bottles filled, lined up with all the, you know, the press all bottles with the, with, with all matching labels out here in this outdoor area, there's a boom pole on the wall in here. There's a hose reel on the wall. So you can play with the Cox hose reel, the Cobra jet hose, see how that works. Or you could wash outside if you want to be out in the mountain air and wash with a boom pole. And there's audio out here. There's a 75 inch mini led here uh, with uh, Dyn Audio Core 59s on the wall, two core subs somewhere on this back wall. Uh, there is a, a noose bomb sprinter lift. Because of the height of the ceiling, you couldn't go fully. But if you wanted to really clean up your wheels or you wanted to mess around with some tools or you know change, I don't know, do something to your car, you could. Uh, this will mainly be there for me when I'm you know, doing modifications and stuff. So there would be a mid-rise lift here. The the wall on the back here will have every Milwaukee tool, so the entire Milwaukee Master Collection, the Master Collection accessory kit. The uh, it'll also have um, full Sonic array of tools as well as whatever other tools I get into. Uh, every single there will be several um, uh, tall list of closets that will be filled with every you know multiple gallons of everything we do GSF brake buster, drying aid, tire dressing. So there'll be refills, everything you can go and touch and feel and see everything. Every Rupes polisher. Um, we'll have an air compressor in here with airlines flanking the the um, the lift. Again, we'll be sharing the design of this and what we come up with, exactly how it's done. Uh, but uh, you'll be able to wash inside, outside. You'll be able to polish your car if you wanted to. Uh, really, it's just about being able to see it, listen to music in here if you want to, watch a movie while you're playing with your car, cleaning it up. It's, I think, going to be the darn dream. So this thing will house, you know, you could fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars is what it's designed to hold. I think it would be more like, you know, the most we'd have in here is three because I may have my, my, you know, may have my, you know, my, the 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 M3 here, my GT4 sitting here, and you bring your car in here, and you know, the keys will be there. You can just move the GT4 or M3 wherever you wanted to do it if you wanted to play with some stuff. Um, but this this oh, it's just going to be freaking amazing. So just imagine this whole setup where you'll be able to wash fully functioning, have you know, immerse yourself in all the cool things that we do. We'll be doing the same thing in the kitchen. The kitchen will have all the Hathala drawer organization. We're going to set up all the cool stuff that we we do. The closets will have the closet stuff. We'll have full suite of DMF and Cree lighting everywhere. Uh, we're going to have Dyn Audio and NAD and, and LG displays everywhere. It's going to be really, really freaking cool. I'm really, really excited. Imagine we eventually did a racing sim and have this room set up where it's just like a it's super audio experience, but also comfortable to go hang out with three or four of your friends. And so, like I said, I, I think the I think the goal for this place for me is to um, I'm going to build it the way I want it, you know, for me. And then the thesis here is that this place uh, becomes, you know, my first destination property, and then. Hopefully you guys will borrow it for money. Uh, the reason I say borrow, if you're watching this for the first time, borrowing um, implies that you're going to take care of it. You know, this is my house. 
It's not some rental piece of crap. Um, this is my house that we're going to chase. By the way, there's a 35 kilowatt generator over here, so the whole house is backed up. Um, I think there's pretty good internet here too, so we're going to test that out. Um, but this thing is going to be something special. And then if you book it up and I can't go there, then I'm going to have to get another one. We'll do another one. And then we'll book that up and we'll get another one. Uh, and so the concept here is you're, it's not going to be on VRBO. It's not going to be on Airbnb. It's not going to be available to everyone. In the beginning, we're going to do it where um, I don't. I won't have a site set up yet, but Destination Obsessed Garage will be wherever you go to watch all the content, uh, watch all the videos to show everything about the house. Uh, I just think this would be so cool. Like if I was going to rent a house for six thousand bucks for the week, and it was going to take me and you know have a couple of my relatives, maybe they kick in a thousand bucks each, so it's not all that painful for me. We go there, and we you have like seventy five videos. Let's say you booked it for August and it's May. I got three months to figure out what I'm going to do when I go there, and I can watch some guy who hopefully I like show me where to eat where to whitewater raft, where to mountain bike, where to play golf, where to, how to wash the car, what's going on in the house, what update was just done to it, what are the closets like, what would I, you know, what, and then I can go read about all the things that are in the house that I want to touch and feel because I might want to buy someday. I don't know, to me it just seems like a freaking awesome deal. So anyway, I'm going to chase this. We're going to get this done. Uh, I'm closing in three weeks, four weeks. So I think uh, I'm going up there tomorrow. So I got to get this done. It's 10 o'clock. Uh, and um, I think it's going to be amazing. So anyway, I hope that uh, hit me up. Sh you know, shoot me an email if you're, you know, if, if you think I'm nuts, tell me. I'm, well, actually, don't send me an email if you think I'm nuts. Tell me you're in. You know, and um, what I'm hoping is when I get some clarity on furniture, some clarity on can I get list of cabinets done in time, uh, clarity on how long is it going to take me to get this thing set up, we'll s I'll pre sell some weeks for those of you who want to be early adopters and want to go, you know, borrow this thing for 5,000 bucks or something like that and, um, and spend a week up there in the mountains and, uh, we won't have our full suite of everything in there, but it's going to be set up nicely. Just imagine I'm going to buy like, I'm going to buy like 500 bars of like individual Irish spring. We're not doing this single ply toilet paper nonsense. You got Charmin, we got Bounty, you know, we've got this a signature. This house is going to smell a certain way. It's going to feel a certain way. It's going to look a certain way. Uh, it's going to get improved every single time I go there. We're going to improve something on it. And in, I'd say it's probably going to take me about a year and a half. And then I'll be done with this, and I'll be looking for the next project. Uh, but I think that you know most of you love early adopting and love going in. Imagine you go year one, year two, year three, and it's like completely different every time you go uh, with something new that you can play with and you know mess around with while you're there. So anyway, I'm excited. I hope you are too. Um, I know this is very audacious. This is a big risk for me. This is not me buying a rich mountain house. This is me, like, taking a risk uh, and, and creating something that I think people will want to experience. This is going to be the house that Obsessed Garage builds, not the I'm um, at by some turnkey thing and he gets a rich mountain house off of you, off the customer's back. And I'm sure some people are going to perceive it that way, but that's not the intent. And the intent of this is to involve and include others and to have it cover the cost. And yes, at the end of 15 years of massive risk taking, I'm going to own a multi million dollar home. And then I've got, you know, maybe someday I'll be rich. But right now, by doing stuff like this is making me poor, <laughs> but to take the risk. And then I can then go in and do all the things that I do and make the videos that you people really seem to like. Uh, I like making them. I like doing them and having a project that I can chase and, and taking something nice and making it really amazing. Uh, I, I'm just I'm excited to do it and to try it. And um, if I fail, I fail. But um, I'm hoping that uh, there's a couple dozen of you that are bought in, that have the means to come and experience this place. And I'm going to show you a really good time by getting it all set up. And 
if you can't come to it, at least you can watch and live vicariously. If you can, you'll have a really good time of it, and then it'll be all kinds of cool stuff. There will be a comfortable couch, a great TV, uh, awesome you know appliances. We'll have it filled with water, and you know again the, the the goal of this is not to be some concierge you know rental company. The goal of this is just to have a place set up the way I would want it if I was going to go to it, and to give you access to it, and again get you ninety five percent of the way there, and you can take it the rest of the way home. That's that's the goal. So, yeah, we're going to be doing um, something I think also that's pretty cool. So the 15th, June 15th through July 15th or July 14th, I guess, so third, you know, a month, we're going to be doing a giveaway where for every $5 spent on Milwaukee stuff, and so we're doing this combination with the launch of our master collection, for every 5 bucks you spend on Milwaukee, um, you're going to gain an entry for a shot to come and stay a week either with or without me. So you're going to win a week with Matt in this house for, and you can choose, you want to come phase one, phase two, phase three. I think it's going to be great. I just think it would be really cool if, you know, you and, you know, if it was you and your family, maybe I bring my family and we stay there together and, and get to know each other. Or if it's just you and me and we bring a couple, you can bring a couple of buddies with you and we can sit, you know, sit down in the basement and play some pool and talk life and business. And then, Hopefully I'm able to go out and drive with you and show you the cool roads. And, you know, if you can't get your car there, you can, you know, use the M3 that'll be there in September, October when I get that thing. It's just going to be so cool. So that, that we're doing as a promotion to try to get you to buy some Milwaukee stuff, do some more promotion on the house. And really me promoting is just sharing what it is I love. And so hopefully you're, you're interested in that. So Anyway, thanks for uh, getting me to this point for watching all this stuff. This is the next level. Uh, I think this is pretty freaking cool, and I hope you do too. So we'll see you soon. Uh, I'll see you um, uh, here in the mountains. I'm going to hopefully be doing some driving videos. I like to drive some other types of cars while I'm up there and get you some some of my take on some some other, other people's cars as well on Hellbender up there in Fontana. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.